Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Batra and this is a special edition where we're going to be focusing on the Q3 earnings and the company on our radar is Biocon and Biocon Biologics that we'll be talking about. Uh, the earnings have been reported for Biocon's consolidated revenues for Q3 FY23. They've shown an increase of 36% or to 3,020 odd crore rupees and that's on the back of robust performances that has been seen all across the verticals of Biocon including the three big verticals, the generics, the research and the biosimilars business as well. Well, the biggest contribution this time around, the company says, has really come in from Biocon Biologics, which actually has reported a 54% increase in the revenues at over 1,507 crore rupees. Now, to discuss uh, more in detail about these numbers, I'm going to be joined by the top management of Biocon Biologics. Sri Hastambe joins in. He's the chief executive officer and managing director of uh, Biocon Biologics. Welcome, sir, and thank you so much for taking the time out uh, for this discussion on Business Today TV. Strong quarterly results, so congratulations on that. If you could give us a little more detail on the highlights of this quarter and give us an, uh, clarity on the exceptional item that's been mentioned uh, in your PNL statement this time. Thank you, Sakshi. Thanks for having me on your show. Uh, clearly, Q3 uh, fiscal 2023 has been a transformational quarter for Biocon Biologics in particular. Uh, we were able to close the uh, Beatrice acquisition and uh, what this quarter has seen is the um, addition of the full revenues uh, for the for one month of the quarter. So it's not yet the full quarter revenues of the acquisition, but we benefited from one month. That's why you've seen the revenues grow 54%, and there's also been a growth in the EBITDA. Hmm. Uh, specifically on the exceptional items, part of this, this is a one-off expense uh, related to the closure of the transaction uh, with Beatrice. These are charges related to... Uh, the uh, completion of this legal fees and uh, fees for closure of the transaction and bank fees. So uh, we don't see that coming forward in the um, subsequent quarters. Uh, okay, so what about the... Sure, sir. Like sure, sir. What about the R&D spend? Uh, they've also seen a substantial uptick uh, in this quarter, uh, both for Biocon and for Biocon Biologics. Could you give us a clarity on that as well? The R&D spends have grown significantly from uh, a little over 60 crores last year in the same quarter to, uh, to almost 20 crores this quarter. So that's a fourfold increase or more. And that reflects the uh, growth and progress of our uh, research pipeline at Biocon Biologics. Um, we see, uh, you know, right now, because we've not booked the full revenues on the top line, yeah. the R&D expenses at 19% of uh, the revenues. We expect this to, um, to to settle down somewhere around that 12 to 15 percent as we've guided in the past. Okay. Uh, you know what we've also noticed this time around, the segmental contribution to overall consolidated revenues of Biocon has also increased from your own division, from Biologics division to over 50 percent this time around. Do you see it further growing from these levels? Well, we certainly are expecting Biocon Biologics to grow significantly from where we are today. Um, you know, in the morning at the earnings call too, we've said that we will be looking to exit this fiscal with a, a billion dollar trajectory, a run rate of roughly about 2,000 crores a quarter. So we significantly uh, are looking to grow our business assumption. Absolutely. And the biologics business has already recorded its highest ever quarterly revenue this time around. And there is a growth uh, that you really are looking forward to end this year with. So which are the key factors that will really push this growth further for you? Of course, the Vietris deal now is done. Uh, two more months of, uh, you know, is, is uh, the revenue flow is what we will see in the next quarter. But what are the key factors that will continue to lead this growth for you going forward? Yeah, so there are quite a few things that are lined up for fiscal 24. It's a very exciting financial year ahead of us. We see the uh, much-awaited launch of uh, our Julio uh, product in the United States. It's the biosimilar Adalimumab, uh, a crowded space, but a very large $18 billion market. And we look to um, you know, make a big success of this uh, asset. So that's clearly a growth driver. We look to build on the success of our uh, SEMGLI, which is our insulin glar gene that we've done in the current fiscal mm. to grow further, uh, you know, increase market shares in the coming years. And, uh, and we also expect the approvals of Aspart and Bevacizumab in the coming years to, to further boost our revenues than, than where they uh, are currently. So we clearly expect to see a lot more momentum than what we've seen uh, getting out of fiscal 23. 
Okay. Could you also help us uh, get more details on what is the current market share of your biosimilars business in both US and European uh, Union and also what is the outlook going forward? Also, if you can expand upon uh, in the emerging markets as well, what is the growth outlook like? Let me talk about the US first. We've got two products in oncology. Uh, we've got our uh, trastuzumab and uh, pectrilrastim. And we've roughly moved past the 10% uh, mark there in terms of market share. And we've held that market uh, share regardless of how much competition's been there. And that's been a very uh, steady market for us. And we see us inching forward there. Uh, on In diabetes, which is the third product in the U.S., we see ourselves around 12-13% uh, already in the U.S. market. It's a sizable one. And we see ourselves moving towards the mid to high teens as we get into the coming fiscal. Uh, coming to Europe, uh, we've focused on um, certain geographies uh, with a few products. We, are, of course, see a lot more opportunity in the coming fiscal to explore, given that we have seven products approved in that uh, region. Uh, right now, we're leading with Adelimumab in uh, Germany with 18% market share and in France, a little around 10%. So clearly big wins and uh, a lot of experience of these products that we will leverage as we bring Adelimumab to the US. Mm. Emerging markets has been our mainstay. We've been growing that business for a very, very long time. And, and that continues to grow in the, in the 20s. Uh, for, a, for a significant period of time. So I would say all round growth, Sakshi, uh, for Biocon Biologics. Okay, and in the emerging markets, the product launch that we can expect, this is the seven pipeline that you just talked about. That's the pipeline that we expect, is it? Yes, that's the pipeline. And as we uh, integrate the Beatrice business into yeah. Biocon Biologics, you will see us uh, you know, fronting these businesses with a self-led model in many more geographies than India. So integration, if you could talk about more uh, of uh, the Beatrice business, how long is it going to take uh, to completely get integrated and will it be in a phased manner? Could you expound upon that? So what we, we did when we signed up the deal with Beatrice, one of the key things that we focused on was business continuity and making sure that patients were always taken care of and served to the best possible interest. So we signed up for a two-year runway with them with, for a transition services agreement, which meant that it operates as business as usual, even as we go around setting ourselves up to integrate the business into Biocon Biologics. Mm. We have the option to, uh, to transfer or migrate markets, as we call them in contractual language, sooner than the two years were we to get ready. And if in a particular area or a service we need longer time, then it provides for that as well. Right, absolutely. But this time around, due to the bump up in revenues and uh, profits, uh, operational profits as well, we did see the margins going up substantially too. Uh, will these be sustainable going forward? Well, we, we hope to. We've, uh, we've constantly guided that our, um, our core EBITDA margins, which is, um, which is reflective of what the business performance is uh, before R&D, because R&D can be depending on where your product is in the pipeline. Mm. The core EBITDA, we've always guided to mid to high 30s. Mm. And uh, we've actually exceeded that this quarter. But we expect to, uh, to stay to the guidance of core EBITDA percentages of mid to high 30s. Okay, I understood that as well. Also, uh, you know, uh, I think about three months ago as well, you had uh, entered into a strategic out licensing agreement with Japanese pharma company Yoshindo Inc. for commercializing of uh, two of its assets as well. If you could give us an update on that and uh, how soon do we see uh, the benefits of that accruing into the PNL as well? So we partnered uh, with one of uh, one of the known companies in Japan in the biosimilar space called Yoshindo, and uh, we continue to progress that product. We've licensed to them uh, our ustekinumab and Vinusumab assets. Uh, these are roughly between the two of them about seven hundred million dollars in opportunity. Uh, in, you know, at a high level, broken up fifty-fifty uh, between these two products. Uh, we are in the early stages in development through them, and we will. Um, be receiving upfront payments, which we have, and we will re receive also regulatory milestones as we progress this uh, with the regulators in Japan and get the product to market. 
Okay. Uh, now that the Beatrice deal has, uh, you know, concluded uh, in a timely fashion, I wanted to understand more on the financials bit on debt as well. If you had taken in uh, to, uh, you know, conclude this deal, what would your strategy be? Are you looking at pairing some debt uh, or any other fundraise that you may have planned going forward for expansions? So again, going back to the deal and uh, and the structure around it, we had an acquisition which was at uh, 3.2 billion dollars, leaving aside Appleberset, and we had funded it with cash and stock, which is 2 billion dollars in cash and 1 billion in stock. That's the structure of the deal. To fund the transaction, we had 800 million dollars in equity and 1.2 billion dollars in debt. Yeah, uh, we have uh, you know closed the. The equity part, and we recently also have been looking to, and this is Biocon Limited, has looked to see that they have more equity infusion in Biocon Limited so that we have uh, the reduction of the me mezzanine finance. So that's one part. But even on the Biocon Biologics side with the $1.2 billion debt, we've seen a lot of interest uh, from uh, private equity investors. And uh, we will be looking down, looking to pay down this debt, and we'll keep you posted on on uh, on progress that we make there. Okay. Last time around, I had asked you about you know when can we really see uh, you know the Biocon Biologics division getting listed on D Street and your IPO plans. Uh, any uh, word on that? Uh, has there been a development? Any discussion in the boardroom? Well, there, there's uh, there's always this discussion, and, and we'd be very excited about unlocking value in in the business, and we will be looking to do that. There are some key uh, milestones that we are looking to achieve in the coming fiscal. I outlined a few of them, so I won't repeat it. But there's another key piece where we're looking to integrate the Beatrice business uh, completely into Biocon Biologics, and that would be another important uh, milestone to look at. Uh, so the I would say the unlocking of value from a liquidity event isn't too far, uh, but there are certain key milestones that we believe uh, we should achieve as a as a company before we take it uh, public. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Tamir, for being with us and sharing all the insights from this quarterly earnings uh, with all our viewers. All the very best to you for the future quarters. And here's hoping to get many more interactions going forward as well to understand more about your business going forward. All the very best to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sakshi. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.